Heisman winning quarterback Jason White is gone. And today, Bob Stoops hands the keys of the offense to a redshirt junior who's making his very first start. Yeah, that's Paul Thompson. It's not so much what Paul Thompson does on the field, but what he doesn't do. It's that he doesn't turn the ball over. That's important in a Bob Stoops offense. He's a great decision maker. He doesn't have foolish mistakes. And another thing, Jerry, he can run the football. And across the field, the trigger man for TCU, fifth-year senior quarterback, Ty Gunn. Yeah, Ty Gunn with him. The key is that he just stays healthy. He's been the starter the last three years, but each year he's gotten hurt and only played in four games. But he's 10-2 and two in those 12 games, and this guy has got to be on the field if TCU has a chance to win. Aaron Hartley will tee it up for the Sooners of Oklahoma. And back to receive. There's a look at Hartley. Here's the sophomore from South Lake, Texas. Back to receive Drew Coleman, the senior sprinter, a 10-3, 100-meter sprinter, as we are set to get underway here in Norman, Oklahoma. Drew Coleman will take it at his own one-yard line. He's scamper up, and there's that coverage that we talked about a moment ago. He barely gets back to the 15-yard line. So much talent they have on their team. That's why they have great coverage, because they've got talent even on their special teams. All right, the fifth-year senior quarterback, Ty Gunn, is the field general for the Horned Frogs. Only started 12 games in his career due to injuries, but he has won 10 of them. He leads... The team in completion percentage, he's a career leader for the school, averaging over 34 points a game when he's the trigger man for this offense. A preseason baby of Ryan watch this candidate. Very, very accurate. Only eight interceptions in his career of 324 passes. Takes a handoff inside, has the receiver wide open across the 20, and out of bounds, that is Quinley Harmon. Take a look at the TCU backs and receivers. The Frogs feature two 1,000-yard rushers at tailback. Hobbs will start today. Robert Merrill will also play. Junior Corey Rogers set a single-season TCU record for receptions by a wide receiver a year ago. In the offensive line, Sims and Taylor are the only returning starters. Culp, by the way, is a Remington Award watch list candidate at center. High formation. Hobbs is the tailback. Opening possession for the Horn Frogs. Gun back to pass again, looks for Rogers, and the flag comes down in the secondary. Jajoki Anyanagicha on the coverage from cornerback, and we'll see what our referee Ju Drew George has to say. Both receiver and uh, defensive back were pushing each other, and they're going to call it on Oklahoma. Take a look again, and we'll see if we see this pass interference on Anya Nagicha. Pass interference, defense, number 22, 15 yards, automatic first down. That was sort of the Achilles heel late in the year for Oklahoma. Their secondary, which really got them hurt in the Orange Bowl against USC. Yeah, yeah Anya Nagicha was a little bit inconsistent last, last year. We talked to their coach. They said he's got to make sure he stays focused. They went after him early. Obviously, they saw the same thing from last year's film. They have three new starters in the secondary. We'll uh, set those in just a moment. As the penalty will give TCU a first down across the 35. Handoff, nothing doing whatsoever. Great defensive effort up front. And speaking of that Oklahoma defense, up front they are led by senior co-captain Dusty Dvorak, a first-team All-Big 12 selection in 2003. After sitting out the remainder of the season in 2004 to the suspension and dismissal, keep an eye on C.J. Ayu, by the way, the transfer from BYU. At linebacker, both Ingram and Alexander are Butkus Award candidates. In the secondary, three new starters, D.J. Wolf at corner, a converted tailback, and Lewis Baker, a converted linebacker at strong safety. Four wide receivers inside pitch off to Hobbs, and he will be up across the 44. We told you Dusty Dvorak is the leader up front defensively for Oklahoma with Marlon Hen. Let's meet the third member of our broadcast team, Trini Kuzderic, on the sideline. Hi, guys. Thanks very much. Well, it is a very emotional day for Dusty Dvorak. It is his first game since last September when he was suspended from the team for getting into an altercation with a childhood friend. That friend ended up in the hospital, and he was dismissed from the team. Now, Dusty was reinstated in January after going through alcohol and, and, and anger management. 
He was named captain earlier this week. He said he wants to be a leader and a good example on this defense. All right, thanks a lot, Trenny. Five wide receivers. Gunn can't find any room, and he will run up across the 49 and have the first down for TCU. First time we saw the empty backfield and five wide receivers. Well, Ty Gunn, he can run the ball as well as pass it. He's great at the option with the option. What he wants to do is run the ball like you've seen them doing to get the secondary, this young secondary, active in the run game and then hit them on the pass. We told you Ty Gunn has only started 12 games for a year over the previous three years for that man right there, Gary Patterson. But when Gunn has been the leader at the field general for this TCU Horned Frog offense, they have been able, they have been 10 and 2. Hand off this time to Hobbs, who cuts it back and will dance down into Oklahoma territory at about the 45. EA Sports. It's in the game. EA Sports Madden NFL 25 is here. A game 25 seasons in the making. Through this one-time offer, you can get it free with your paid order of Sports Illustrated. Call or go online now to SIOffer.com. Run free with the all-new Precision Modifier in EA Sports Madden NFL 25. With your paid order, you'll also get the bonus video digital download of Football Life, Barry Sanders, and two Madden NFL Ultimate Team Legends. Unlock the action and boost your Ultimate Team's rating. This package is available only with your paid subscription to Sports Illustrated. These items are real scoreless here in Norman, Oklahoma. 13 minutes to play in, in the first half. And Texas Christian, or TCU, I should say, the Horned Frogs, let me know it has. After the completion, we'll have the first down. They have not had much success running the football, but throwing it, they've been very successful. And once again, the pump fake and the completion upfield. That's a Quinn Har or Quinley Harmon, I should say. That's Check that, Derek Moore on the reception there, the sophomore out of Wisconsin. What you've got is a, is a senior quarterback playing with young secondary people. He makes the pump fake to the flat, brings the support up, and makes the throw behind. A beautiful play by Ty Gunn. And Derek Moore, nice catch bringing the football down. We mentioned that TCU has run the ball nine times and only had 14 yards rushing where they have been much more successful. 15 pass plays for 76 yards. Neither team has been able to run the ball very well, Jerry. It's amazing how, how much these two teams are both stopping the run. Well, TCU will take a timeout as their quarterback wants to go over and talk it over with head coach Gary Patterson. Now it's time for our Aflac trivia question. This week's question is, who were the only two TCU players to have their jerseys retired in college football? A little bit of TCU history here, and they've had some great history over the years Absolutely. down in Fort Worth, Texas. If you don't know the answer, you'll know it when you see it. Only two jerseys in the history of TCU retired, and there are very, very recognizable names. Now, we, you heard Trini a little bit ago talking about the heat down on the field here. Oh, my. And uh, we're already seeing some massage taking place there with some of the players trying to uh, avoid the cramps. Now the key, as always, is getting hydration to them before they cramp up. As you know, Doc, uh, that uh, once you get the cramps, it's hard to go backwards. Gary Patterson made a comment to us during our, our uh, conference call that his players and during their conditioning throughout the summer ran in the middle of the day, not in the morning or an evening when it was cooler, so they ran in the middle of the day to try to acclimate to the temperature. Because he said it, not a single yep. player in fall camp had to have an IV. Yeah, okay, said, off camera. Yeah, he said he would play as many as 12 linemen, uh, seven linebackers, and 10 defensive backs. Not just this game, but in the first three games because he has no off week. It's hot, and he's got to get a lot of these people ready to play. Trini, how hot is it down there? It's pretty hot down here, you guys. In the shade, it's about 100 degrees. In the sun, our thermometer says it's about 115. Both trainers told me they're going to stress fluids, especially sports drink with salt in it, to prevent the cramp you guys were talking about. Here's the end around wide open. That is Donald Massey. The speedster cuts it back. Has one man to beat on the outside, and he make the tackle. A touchdown saving tackle by C.J. Igu, the transfer from BYU via Snow Junior College. Great blocking, and what a great call by Mike Shaw. Exactly. The Look at the coordinator. See, they saw the pursuit, the pursuit, pursuit, pursuit. When you see people over pursuing the ball, over running, you run the reverse. You counter to the backside. Unbelievable. C.J. Ayu, a beautiful play of pursuing the ball. Continuing to chase the ball down to make the tackle, number 99, C.J. Ayu. Donald Massey, the converted cornerback on a 32-yard scamper. 
And for the second time here in the first half, TCU threatening in Oklahoma territory. Gunn completes the pass to Rogers, who nearly breaks the tackle. Down to 21. TCU spent a lot of time watching Southern California against uh, Oklahoma the championship game. Not because they have the same talent, but because they want to see how many formations they use, how much movement, how much motion. They said that's what we've got to do. We've got to keep those young defensive backs thinking. They're throwing the ball a lot out of a lot of other different formations, personnel groupings, and movement. And this crowd of predominantly Oklahoma Sooner fans very quiet all of a sudden here at Memorial Stadium as TCU driving. Inside handoff, opening and a couple of yards maybe for Robert Merrill. If your computer's running slow. Dancing back and forth and nearly breaking through is Merrill again. Picks up the first down again. Uh, there, nice mix up of running the play. Fake the little reverse. Nice play up the middle for the first down. How about a call to the big guys up front for TCU? Michael Tudu, Shane Sims, Stephen Cook, Ben Angeli. And Herbert Taylor, the offensive line, doing a very nice job against a very athletic OU front. Exactly. They have, you know, they have some seniors over there. That's a good thing. This is a, a line with a lot of experience, a lot of older men, that first group there. So not a lot of starters back, but experience. There's the change of direction. Here is Gunn, has a receiver, tries to throw it back to the tight end. And he threw it a little shallow there, and Andrews couldn't hold on. Not going to give Oklahoma a stationary target to hit. You're seeing the quarterback in a lot of different places. Gets rid of the ball quick. I, I really like this TCU offense. Even with Ty Gunn hurt last year, they had a pretty good offense last year. Top 20 offensive scoring offense. Uh, they never went downhill offense. The one thing about TCU, it was kind of an aberration last year. Their defense not being very good. because they've, they've been very good on defense and a strong scoring offense. Five wide receivers, empty backfield, gun, flags fly, and they will blow the play dead. That's a motion. It'll cost them five yards. Prior to the snap, false start. 33 on the offense, five yards from the previous spot, still second down. I tell you, there are penalties and there are foolish penalties inside the red zone, plus 20. Everything counts when you have a procedure penalty, a motion penalty. It's a foolish penalty, uh, and it, just, it drives a coach crazy. This is where you have to put your thinking caps on. Don't make a mistake. Good, solid, quick count. Don't get a lot of, a lot of false cadences. Don't get a lot of hard counts. Get there, get the ball snapped, get everybody on side. And here's the sad part for TCU. They had five wide receivers. They had a flanker in there who was wide open on about the 12-yard line with no one covering them on to go. We'll see if they go back and run the same play. What's what your daddy tell you about plays that work? 10, well, hey, go them again. Keep on doing them until they stop working. As they reset the clock here, our outstanding Big 12 officiating crew led by Drew George. TCU threatened on their opening possession in the first quarter, drove to the 30-yard line of Oklahoma Territory before that drive stalled after 10 plays. And now the 10th play of this drive coming. The look off back to Rogers. He makes the catch and is drilled. What a hit at about the 16-yard line. And Rogers' helmet pops off. Marcus Walker out of Waco, Texas, who had been banged up in the preseason, just drilled Corey Rogers. Yeah, made a great tackle. Initial contact on the catch. A little slip screen right here. The quick pop to the quick screen. Looks one way. Hits the quick. Now watch the quick. Marcus right here. Lock up. Lock the hands. Lock the hands. Then, oh, man, the big pop. Big pop by Rufus Alexander. But the guy's got your leg hanging on. Get bad down. Get down. Actually, Walker had a hold of his right. feet. It was Clint Ingram who came in and just took the helmet off. That's the slobber knocker, courtesy of Clint Ingram, the Buckus Award candidate. Third and 12. In the red zone. Four wide receivers back out of the backfield. Gunn gets some pressure, throws it, has the receiver, and touchdown, Horn Frog. A 16-yard completion to Derek Moore, the sophomore, out of Cedarburg, Wisconsin, and Ty Gunn has put TCU on the board first here in Norman, Oklahoma. Derek Moore playing out of the slot. Ty Gunn out of the arms of a defender, makes the throw. Derek Moore breaks the tackle. Put Oak, put TCU ahead. Derek Moore is a walk-on sophomore, and he catches a touchdown, the very first touchdown of the afternoon for TCU.
Water damage can cost you thousands. And under oh. Back in Norman, Oklahoma, a sold-out Memorial Stadium has suddenly gotten very quiet because TCU, the Horned Frogs, out of the Mountain West Conference, have come out on top seven to nothing. An 11-play drive, 84 yards, four minutes and 49 seconds off the clock, and a 16-yard toss from Gun to Moore, the sophomore walk-on, who fought his way into the end zone, and the Horned Frogs are up seven zip. Ty Gunn, he's, he's, he's got such composure, 6'3", 220 pounds. He's so calm. He stands in there, throws the call, might, might the right throw, hits the guy when he's covered. I can see why he's 10-2 and two as a starter and why he is the, is the strength of this football team. Peter Lococo about to kick it off. And by the way, the last time Oklahoma lost a home opener here in this stadium, September 7th, 1996. And guess who the team was? TCU. TCU. The Warren Frogs beat them 20 to 7. So, folks, history does repeat itself, and there's a lot of football yet to be played here this afternoon in Norman, Oklahoma. A absolutely. High kick down to the end zone will bound away, and Oklahoma will take it on their own 20 yard line. And TCU able to punch it in up 7 0. 10 minutes to play here in the first half. Thompson will fake on the play flake. Has a receiver, that's Wilson down the field, and the ball is overthrown. All right, all right, what's happened now? It's twice he's had a deep, deep guy open, or at least he'd have thrown that ball away from the defender to the side. That's twice he's overthrown. He's got to understand when you have a deep ball, it's more important to underthrow than overthrow. An overthrow ball is never completed. An underthrown ball to the right side. If he just leads him to the opposite sideline, away from the defender, it's going to be an easy catch. That's something Paul's got to learn because they're overloading the box. Remember TCU secondary, worst in the country a year ago. They drop it off this time to Peterson. A great pursuit from the backside by Jared Redkovsky. Radkowski there making the tackle on Peterson. Radkowski to back up for Ortiz. Left in. For Chase Ortiz. They're playing a lot of defenders now. He's fresh. He's able to run. It's hot. So they're playing their backups as well as their front front four to keep the speed to keep Adrian Peterson from getting outside on that screen play. Well, how about this defensive front playing awfully well for TCU? Dick Bumpus and company getting this uh, these guys fired up to play. Well, they were last in defense and pass coverage last year, not in run coverage. They have always been pretty pretty sporty up front. Getting some pressure on Thompson. He has to hurry to throw, and he grounds it in front of the receiver. The intended receiver was Lindy Holmes. And that means Oklahoma will have to punt. Well, we asked you earlier our athletic trivia question. Who were the only two retired jerseys in TCU football history? And our answer, how about number 45, quarterback Sammy Ball. Let him know national championship in 1935. They upset LSU in Sugar Bowl. And number eight, Davey O'Brien, the quarterback in 1938, their second national title. By the way, Davey O'Brien, the very first TCU player and Southwest Conference player to win the Heisman Trophy. Well, Oklahoma will kick it away. And got some pressure, nearly got it blocked. A high floater back to Drew Coleman, who will call the fair catch. Health insurance is on everybody's mind right now. You eat minutes to play here in the first half in what is a very quiet Memorial Stadium here, the quietest I've ever heard. 83,000 plus people be as their Sooners of Oklahoma trail 7 0 and have struggled to move the ball offensively. Talk about the high powered Sooner offense coach, and TCU has almost doubled the total yards on them here in the first half. Double the time of possession, 14 minutes to 6 minutes, uh, more importantly. And off inside, and maybe a half a yard by Lante Hobbs. We told you that Ty Gunn doing a great job. We showed you two former TCU quarterbacks who both won national titles. Look at the winning percentage. Next to Howard Grubbs, Ty Gunn at 83.3% is the winningest quarterback in TCU history with a 10 and two record as a starter. Sammy Ball and uh, is there, Chuck Curtis. Hunter Enos. And as we said at the opening, him staying healthy is a key. He's only been able to play in four games each of his previous three years because of injury. He stays healthy. That It won't be another five and six years. Second and ten. He'll throw it again. This time wide open downfield inside the 20-yard line and a touchdown saving tackle by Clint Ingram. And that is Lante Hobbs, the tailback. 
And oh my, if, if you're Bob Stoops, you got to be concerned about what's right here, happening right now. Watch the quarterback, Marcus. Here we go, Marcus, right here. Marcus Walker steps up, misses the coverage. The safety does not come over top quick enough. A two deep coverage. What you're seeing, Clint Egram has to make the tackle right there. Poor two deep coverage. The cornerback has to get a better hit on the wide receiver to slow him down to get the safety time to get over top. A 41-yard gain, and now TCU has put up 142 passing yards in the first half. We still have eight minutes to play. Dunn, the quick shot outside, nearly gets it picked off in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. The one thing that TC wanted to do, you're seeing it, they no back set there, an open backfield, change the formations, change the movement of the quarterback and the receivers and keep the secondary off balance. This, this secondary, this defensive secondary especially, is playing on their heels. They're seeing things they couldn't see in practice. They're seeing things they, they could not anticipate TCU doing from last year's film, and they're not mentally able to handle it. Second and 10 for TCU, Ty Gunn. High formation, Hobbs the tailback. And Gunn will keep it on the option. A quarterback that's had trouble with injuries takes it himself inside the 10-yard line. And it has suddenly become a very quiet stadium. Let's check in that on the floor with Trini Kuzneri. Well, guys, it's also a very quiet OU bench. I was over there after the TCU touchdown. You would think there would be yelling, some firing up to get the guys going. It's not. It's very quiet. I talked to someone on the sideline who said they may really be missing Larry Burdine, who's always been a vocal leader for them. He is out with an injury, guys. Larry Burdine is a leader, but but Dustin Dvorak is their key letter. It's time for him to step up and get the other people fired up. Yeah, Burdine tore a biceps muscle early in camp, and he wants to sit out the season. As Gunn throws one of his uh, poorer passes, that one intended for Corey Rogers. Take a look at this offensive production. You talk about the high-powered Sooner offense, and TCU didn't get a lot of uh, publicity coming in, but take a look, 196 yards in 35 plays, averaging 5.6 yards a play. Oklahoma in less than 100, and we uh, just have over seven minutes to play in the half. No turnovers, that's the most important thing. Again, if they go for a field goal here to extend the lead to 10. Mike Schultz, offensive coordinator, said we must control the clock, don't turn it over, get the game to the fourth quarter. Peter Lococo was inconsistent a year ago from 25 yards out. Four Seasons built my sunroom. Four Seasons installed my... It's quite in the crowd here with seven minutes and 18 seconds to play. Up 10 to nothing, the Horn Frogs in their very first game as a member of the Mountain West Conference. TCU, by the way, the fourth conference they've been a participant of in the last 11 years. They were a part of the old Southwest Conference in 1995 in the final year. The WAC from 96 to 99, Conference USA in 2000 to 2004, and now they are the newest member of the Mountain West Conference. Peter Lococo, this is the 25-yard field goal a moment ago. We'll tee it up. And Travis Wilson, the receiver, wide receiver, is upended at the 25-yard line. Coming up on the Valvoline Halftime Show, John Craig and Aaron will have highlights and analysis of today's big games, plus they'll discuss some of college football's key coaching changes. All that and more coming up in 7 minutes and 12 seconds on our Valvoline Halftime Show. Yeah. And, Coach, this score going around the country, TCU up 10-zip over Oklahoma is going to be raising a few eyebrows. Well, I don't remember the last time, I say the last time, other than the championship game, uh, during regular season, they've been down in a game 10 to nothing. They have an incredible regular season record. It, at halftime against Fiat Bowling Green last year, it was 24 to 10, but they started out much closer for one quarter. And what something's got to happen, Adrian Peterson needs, needs to break a big run or they must hit a deep ball. This team, this TCU defense is going to stay. Remember we said a 4-2-5 defense, five secondary people, but when they put two safeties on the line of scrimmage, that's eight, and they've actually got the, the, the free safety up there, two for nine. You've either got to hit a deep ball to one of those wide receivers one-on-one -on -one with the cornerbacks. Take a look at Peterson's numbers, five rushes for nine yards, averaging 1.8. He's Peterson, by the way, has had three running plays and one pass play for zero yards has been stopped at the line of scrimmage. They've got to get him on track. This time they hand it off to Kiwan Jones, the backup tailback, who's been a little nicked up here in fall camp. And he gets, uh, he may lose a yard. Jason Phillips made the tackle again uh, from his linebacker position. 
Well, what happens is now this tests your poise, your poise on offense. You know, Paul Thompson, he doesn't make mistakes, but the great characteristic of quarterbacks, do you have poise under pressure? And this is where your leadership skills, your ability to show your, your personality in the huddle takes over. You saw Patterson talking to Bumpus, the defensive coordinator, a moment ago. Here is, oh, and nailed behind the line of scrimmage. Thompson just gets hammered on the sack back at about the 18-yard line. Eric Buchanan, the backup strong safety, just racing by the blocker, and this gets a face mask full of Paul Thompson. Well, you know, in, in third down situations, there was a safety blitz that you could not pick up. You'll see right here comes the late safety blitz. The quarterback can't pick up. Now he's got to feel that defender, that rusher, and make the, make the throw before he gets sacked. Now, I will say if he doesn't complete the ball, they've got to punt it anyway, so he's going to hold on a little longer. But Eric Buchanan comes in, beats the late ta tackle trying to pull back on the block. Quarterback either needs to see it and get rid of it, but you can hold it a little longer because you're going to punt the ball away anyway. Third straight three and out by Oklahoma's offense. That wobbly kick by Cody Freeby will hit in TCU territory. Move back to Oklahoma territory, and a flag is down on the punt. A three very, very short 28-yard punt by Cody Freeby. This game has been played on the Oklahoma side of the ball because of those three and outs the entire second half, second quarter. As Drew George, our Big 12 referee, will talk it over. A couple of players were swatting at the football, almost as if they were trying to bat the football. Field judge came in with a flag from the corner. There's a look at Bob Stoops. Got to be wondering what the heck is happening here. That's exactly right. You know, Bob is so positive. During the kick, holding number 10, White, penalized 10 yards from the spot of the foul. TCU's ball, first down. Foolish penalty. And holding on the uh, receiving team, that's Ryan Slinger, the backup middle linebacker, junior out of Justin, Texas, and that'll cost him 10 yards. We told you Bob Stoops the winning us active coach in college football, 67 victories in terms of percentage over the last six years, five bowl games, six bowl games, three Big 12 titles, and three BCS title games, but he's not feeling much like a champion right now. They are struggling here in the first half, down 10 zip. Likes come in as uh, the big guy, Dusty Dvorak, steps across. Prior to the snap, false start, 61, flight, five yards from the previous spot, still first down. Ben Angeli, senior out of Earth, Texas. Ben, who had uh, was a questionable starter today, had been banged up the last week or so in fall camp down in T-Stent down into Fort Worth. But if you're a coach at TC, you're pulling your hair. You've had two straight penalties that, that kept you from being on about the 50. And you know, you, you know if you're TCU, if you just score here, it totally changes the way Oklahoma goes into the halftime. You heard Trini Kuznarek talking about how solemn it was on the Oklahoma bench. TCU gets that completion and almost get back to the original line of scrimmage. Corey Rogers making the catch. And coach mentally, if you're Oklahoma, you've, you've coached these teams. You were the head coach at Auburn. You're heavily favored to win your home opener and suddenly you're down and you may and you just and you're struggling moving the football well what you got to do is you've got to be in your, in your kids face on the sideline not yelling but keeping them positive keep them positive then as a play caller you've got to you've got to give the players something when you do get an offense to make a big play but until that happens keep them mentally pumped up excited it's going to happen it's going to happen Second and 10, Merrill in motion gun back to pass dumps it off and right in the hands of Quinley Harmon and he drops the football. Third and 10 for TCU. Think back a year ago when a Mountain West Conference team opened up against the Big 12 team. It was A&M in Utah. Utah won 41 21 We're on to a 12 0 season and a fourth ranked national ranking. So, once lot, again, Big 12 and Mountain West. A lot of change, though, because last night, Arizona, you saw Utah, Arizona got Prior after Utah, snap, almost beat them. Ball start, 61 on the offense, five yards from the previous spot, still third down. And these mental mistakes are going to be driving Gary Patterson nuts when he heads in at halftime. You see Patterson, who is 
all about disciplining from his days at Kansas State. Ben Angeli, the lineman right there, that's his second penalty. He's a veteran. That should not happen. A little lack of composure. These, this series, three penalties right now. Gun on the inside, shovel pass, and once again a flag comes in. That's four straight. One on the kicking game, three this series. Now, you're really blowing an opportunity here. Prior to the snap, false start, 61, offense, five yards from the previous spot, still third down. You have to wonder if uh, Angeli is just, is just tired. He, he's had to miss some practice the last week or so, and maybe the fatigue factor. You know, they wanted him to play because he is the best they got at that position. But, it, but two in a row, he's costed them a lot of yards. Well, exactly. You get tired right there. You see TCU eight penalties for 42 yards. Oklahoma doing well in that department. But Angeli, when you're tired, you lose your concentration and you don't pay attention to snap count. That was the fifth fall start for TCU. Gun looking upfield, nearly has it picked off. The ball is batted away. First three and out for TCU. And Brian Courtney standing back inside his own 15. A nice kick. Courtney gets a mortar shot all the way down to the 12-yard line for Oklahoma. Rankins cuts it back and will just get across the 20. Oklahoma just ran on the football field and lined up with the uh, quarterback, Rhett Bomar, who kept it himself. Bomar, the top prep quarterback in the nation two years ago. And here's a look at Bomar's first snap with the Oklahoma offense. Almost loses balance. Nice cutback by Bomar. I tell you, you, you need something to happen. You need something big to happen right there. Backup quarterback comes in. Top prep quarterback in the country makes a big play. Omar out of Grand Prairie, Texas, a 28-yard run on the very first time he touches the football. Inside handoff to Peterson. He's trying to dance away, and Peterson will lose about four yards on a great tackle by Jason Phillips, a middle linebacker, and converted fullback. They fake it to Peterson on that big run by Bomar. Let me tell you something. They're going to stop Peterson. Keep faking it to Peterson. Either throw it or run it. They're going to put everybody on Peterson. He's one of the best backs in the country. 1,925 yards last year. Yeah, if somebody's going to beat us today, uh, Gary Patterson says it isn't going to be Peterson. Be Peterson. <laughs> they have done a really nice job of hemming in Peterson trying That's to run the football. Here is Bomar's first pass, and it is batted down as he gets leveled by Chase Ortiz, the defensive end, coming in. That's just a poor job by the offensive line. That's not a blitz. That's just the defensive end, Ortiz, knocking the ball down. You'll see right there, Chase knocks the ball down. With you got to have some lineman chopping at his feet, set back, and then cut at his feet. Get his hands down. It's a quick pass. Dick, Dick Bumpus, the defensive coordinator, defensive line coach, who, by the way, was a mentor to Gary Patterson at Utah State. And Navy, Patterson actually worked under his current defensive coordinator as an assistant at those two schools and learned to be a coordinator himself. Third and long for Oklahoma, ball under throw. Third time today we've seen a pass under throw and a receiver could have gotten it had the ball gotten there. Yeah, I mean, that's what you're seeing. A, a redshirt junior and a redshirt freshman who haven't had a lot of snaps. They've got open people. Juwan Rankin's right there open. He's been open a couple times, not being able to hit the open receiver. That's what Oklahoma's going to have to do. I, I don't care. You've got Adrian Peterson. And once you do that a couple times, then come back once in a while to Adrian Peterson. He'll make the big run. Well, Cody Freeby will have to punt it away. And standing deep, a 10-3, 100-meter sprinter in high school, Drew Coleman. There's a look at Coleman. There is a defensive back and a high floating kick, and Coleman will wave it and take the fair catch at his own 20-yard line. At the 20-yard line. If you're one of the millions. Five receivers, one back, and the quick dump out to the uh, receiver for maybe about a yard. That is Chad Andrus, the tight end. I tell you, he did a great job of not going out of bounds. I want to say to keep that clock running. No, he did go out of bounds. No, kept the clock running. You saw him stay in zone. That was a great job right now. Keep that clock running because right now you don't want to kick it back to Oklahoma right now. Great first half by Ty Gunn, the fifth-year senior quarterback. 14 of 25 throwing the football. 100, make that 15 of 26 with that completion. 149 yards and a touchdown. 
I formation, three wide receivers for the Horned Frogs. Gun back to pass, has the receiver Rogers at the 40-yard line, first down TCU. Yeah, that ball was thrown on a rope. Marcus Walker on the coverage, cornerback for Oklahoma. And again, Rogers just did the slant inside. You'll see right here, Ty Gun sets back. Rig rifles the ball in to Corey Rogers on the slant. Marcus Walker makes the tackle for Oklahoma. A year ago, Ty Gunn threw for 368 yards in the TCU opener against Northwestern. That game went in the double overtime before the, the Horn Frogs prevailed on a 47-yard field goal. And once again, Gunn hot in the opener. And might have had some hold up there on the defender, on the intended receiver, Marcus Walker, grabbing on to Walter Bryan as he came by. And if he doesn't grab him, Bryan's about two steps past him. I tell you, they're working on old Marcus Walker a good bit. I don't know if it's by design to go against him or just to go to a Holding certain receiver. Number 24 on the defense. That's against an eligible pass receiver. Ten yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. If we can see what happened, watch Marcus grab the receiver. It's a quick hit. Almost a read of a blitz. It's a quick, quick throw in there. Well, you see, he pulls his arm around him right there. Marcus Walker was injured, shoulder, injured his shoulder in preseason. He's had a tough preseason, but he did start the last two games last year. He's got a lot of talent. They like him, but he's being worked on right now um, by the TCU offense. Yeah, Walker had four starts last year, had off-season shoulder surgery, mm -hmm. missed spring ball, and then dislocated the other shoulder yeah. in August camp, so he hasn't had a lot of time yeah. on the field in his defense. Monte Hobbs, the 1,000-yard rusher, is the lone setback. Three wide receivers. Option to Hobbs, who gets the pitch, has some running room, and we talked about that speed defensively for Oklahoma. Great pursuit and closing effort by Zach Latimer, and Gunn just took a hit and has gone down. Ty Gunn, we told you he has only started 12 games. He has missed 21 games in three years. And his most serious injury came in 2002 when, the, when he tore ligaments in his right knee against Southern Miss. He takes the hit. That's John Williams, the backup left in for Oklahoma. We told you Gunn has had a series of injuries. There's a look at the knee injury. The ACL repair in 2002 had a shoulder dislocation, a groin injury, a broken finger in 03. First four games last year, they were unbeaten until he goes down. They have an ankle against Texas Tech. In fact, a year ago, this TCU team was up 21 to nothing in the second quarter against Texas Tech. He goes down, and they lose 70 35. to 35. Unbelievable. Yeah, that and that was a key game. Right here, seen again. Just the weight of the defender, John Williams, on the quarterback. Oh, but he just got his breath knocked out. Apparently, that is the case. Just got hit right in the uh, the chest as Ty Gunn gets up and walks off. They only had 2,500 tickets here for the TCU Horn Frog Faithful, and they sold every one of them. And everyone, everyone. can get their hands on. They've got a pretty small contingent here, but they are standing and applauding <laughs> yeah, as Ty Gunn walks everyone off. Everyone, a sigh of relief by 2,500 people. Jeff Ballard comes in again as the backup quarterback. Uh, Mike Schultz said he's the guy you put in if you're ahead. You may go with Hoffman if they're behind. He's got the better arms. Friendswood, Texas is where Ballard is from. He'll hand it off to the tailback. That is Hobbs, and he will be inside the 40. That should be enough for another TCU first down. We haven't heard much from running backs on either side. Lante Hobbs, though, again, another 1,000-yard rusher as a freshman. And we'd like to see it with, a, with Ballard, the backup quarterback, coming in for a few snaps. You would like to see uh, the running backs have some success, take the pressure off Jeff Ballard. Again, he made second team and was named second team basically because he didn't make mistakes. Uh, uh, Chad Huffman, the third team, really has the big arm. Got to be a huge surprise here in the first half. TCU with 236 yards of total offense against an Oklahoma team known for speed and athleticism on defense. And do we have the sixth procedure penalty on TCU? The flag has come in. There's Ty Gunn up walking around on the uh, Horn Frog sideline. Should be coming slam. back in momentarily. Start. Number 81, covered receiver, came off the line of scrimmage, 
five yards from the previous spot, still first down. Yes, we have number six on TCU if you're keeping score at home. Another senior, Chad Andrus, again, uh, lining up incorrectly, causing the penalty of tight end, Chad Andrus. And Ty Guns trots back on the field as you hear the Horned Frog faithful cheer in the background. First and 15 here in the final minute and a half of the first half. And the football comes out. There's a couple on the play. As the flags come in, or a couple of flags come in, he might have had some movement there in the uh, defensive front. Either that or offsides. It's almost as if he jumped over to get the blitz and was caught offsides. Yeah, Gary Patterson wants the uh, wants him to note, note the flag there. They'll see it. Offside, number 44 on the defense. Five yards from the previous spot. Still first down. Great call, Coach. Well, Clint Ingram, again, he's anxious to blitz. He's Gary right there in the center guard gap. You'll see him. But he gets that arm across the line of scrimmage too soon. And again, he's not the one that caused the fumble, but because he was offsides, um, the fumble is, uh, is taken back. Five-yard penalty. Little things, little things. Talking about his Oklahoma defense that uh, lost uh, two fabulous uh, defensive ends a year ago. Dan Cody, who was the Hendricks runner-up along with all-conference Jonathan Jackson. They have three defensive backs that have gone to the NFL. Ten players drafted. Huge losses for Oklahoma in the offseason. And that pass nearly picked off. They will call it incomplete as he was on his knees. Well, how about the last time Oklahoma was trailing at the half? November 6, 2004, at Texas A&M. They were down 28-21 and came back to win 42-35. By the way, that was the game that Adrian Peterson re-injured his shoulder in. He had off-season shoulder surgery, and Oklahoma had to fight back to win that one. This is a much younger team. It's going to be interesting how they'll, they do respond. Final minute of the first half, big opening right side, and Hobbs will get down near the 35. Rufus Alexander makes a stop. Rufus has such great closing speed. I saw that big opening that you saw, but it just was there, and then it was gone. Uh, the linebackers, Ingram and, and Alexander, all three linebackers, as a matter of fact, Latimer, Ingram and Alexander all have been around the ball all day long. Five tackles, five tackles, four tackles, respectively. 239 yards of total offense. Final 20 seconds of the first half, and Gunn will try to fall on it. And Oklahoma may have gotten it here. Oklahoma will indeed take over. First turnover of the first half by TCU, and Oklahoma will have maybe two plays and 14 seconds remaining in the half. Oh, quarterback mistake there. You see the quarterback take his eye off the ball now. Just try to get on it. Yeah, big John Williams comes in and dives on it from his backup defensive end position. And possibly Oklahoma will have yeah. a shot to get some points here. What happened there? You can see, you can see. watch Ty Gunn. He'll be looking at the, he'll be looking at the blitz to the left. Watch his head to the left. Eyes to the left. He, he doesn't pick up the ball. He's trying to make a read. Mistake that you can't make, but he's got his eyes off the ball. John Williams making the fumble recovery. Four wide receivers. Bomar, the quarterback, will throw toward the end zone. Has the receiver at about the 34. And they're going to say got out of bounds with five seconds on the clock. That was Quentin Cheney. Timeout. Oklahoma wants a timeout. Bomar, the redshirt freshman, after the 17-yard completion to Cheney. Trying to get half of it back right there. You got 14 seconds, get half of it back. And watch the lick that Bomar takes from the defender. Ortiz, Chaz Ortiz. Uh, welcome to Big Top College Football, welcome. Brent. <laughs> I tell you, I've been impressed. Bomar in his very first snap a moment ago, a 28-yard run from scrimmage on the fake option to, Pe to Peterson and uh, showed a lot of poise and composure for a redshirt freshman here. I tell you, when he was not named the starting quarterback this week, uh, they named Paul Thompson, he says, I ain't giving up. I'm not giving up. I want that job, and I want it now, and I'm going to fight for it. 
Uh, and you see he's a crowd favorite, too. The number one prep quarterback when they signed him two years ago. We are at a sold-out Memorial Stadium in Norman, Oklahoma, along with Trini Kuznarek and the coach, Terry Bowden. I'm Jerry Punch. Glad to have you with us. The defending Big 12 champion and seventh-ranked Sooners of Oklahoma on the ropes here in the first half. Courtesy the newest member of the Mountain West Conference, the TCU Horn Frogs. Up 10 to nothing, but a turnover a moment ago as Ty Gunn was trying to run the clock out has given the ball back to Oklahoma with just six ticks on the clock. And remember the last time Oklahoma lost a home opener was to this TCU club back in 1996, September 7th to be exact, 21 to seven. Here is Bomar and has the receiver that is Wilson down at about the 32. To Wilson, number four. Obviously they want to go for one field goal shot, try to get something going, uh, something on the board before halftime. And this has to be a shocker if you're Oklahoma head coach Bob Stoops. You've had so much success. You've got so much talent coming off your best recruiting class of the year. They had 15 players. They lost 15 players last year that were starters, and they've certainly had to retool quite a bit. Well, yeah, yeah, you almost hate to ask him, if, are you rebuilding or reloading? Because you know he doesn't like to hear that rebuild word, but that's been everybody's question this year. Garrett Hartley has nailed a couple of 50-plus yarders in the spring. This one will be 49 yards out to put Oklahoma on the board. It's long enough, and it is no good. As the first half, first half will end here, and TCU is pulling off a shocker in Norman, Oklahoma. A rebuilt defensive secondary. They were the worst in the country a year ago. And Gary Patterson wants all his players to line up and listen. He's got his team huddled right in the very middle of the field. Gary Patterson, extremely team-oriented, wants to tell his players, think about the first half. We're going to go in the locker room and think about what's going to happen in the second half. Meanwhile, the Oklahoma coach is standing by with Trini Kuzneri. Coach, you have the ball first thing second half. What is the key adjustment you need to make on offense to put the control in your favor? Yeah, we, well, we got to be able to run the football. We haven't been able to do that. Little, you know, uh, when we did, we drove down. We, we turned the ball over on the five. we got to get some consistency running the football to open up some passing. All right, thank you very much, Coach. Right, Coach, you have to be happy with your first half, but one thing I would think you want to do is maybe clean up the mistakes, especially the penalties on offense. Well, we do, and, you know, you're playing a team that's playing the national championship game the last two years, so uh, playing in their house, uh, their fans, so uh, we know we got to play another 30 minutes of football, and uh, hopefully if we can stay ahead by one point, then we'll have a chance to pull out a victory, but we got a lot of work to do. Thanks very much, Coach. Good thank luck you. in the second half. All right, Trini, thank you very much. Gary Patterson, uh, an emotional guy, and what a job he and his staff have done taking a defense that was 117th in the country last year in pass defense and gave up 40 points or more five times. They have shut out Oklahoma and Adrian Peterson in the first half. Just an unbelievable performance for the TCU defense. You know, uh, coming off the field, uh, uh, Bob Stoops said they had to run Adrian Peterson more and better. They do, but until you hit a few deep balls, you're not going to spread them out. You can't get the open running lanes with nine guys on the line of scrimmage. Peter Lococo will kick it as it heads downfield, take it inside the 30, and a lick head high. And that is Lee Lindy Holmes who took the pass, who took the uh, kickoff, by the way, and got hit at about the 25. And that's where Oklahoma will take over here in the second half. First half numbers for Adrian Peterson, folks. It's not a misprint. You know, he just uh, eight carries for five yards. They have done a great job again of, uh, of overloading the box. They're going to take away the run. I can't say it enough. They're going to take those defensive backs, those five defensive backs, put two in, in the front, so a 4-2 becomes a 4-4 eight-man front. Paul Thompson back in at quarterback, gives it to Peterson. You heard... Uh, Bob Stoops said we've got to get Adrian Peterson running the football. Take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. The first half stats here. The numbers all favor TCU. Total offense for the Horned Frogs, 225 yards, 167 of it through the air. Second play of the second half, and that time Peterson will cut it upfield and tries to get outside, gets his feet cut out from under him. <laughs> by Bonner, 
and Coleman went out there on the stop. But well, the one thing they have done, they've gone back to the I formation. And you talked to Chuck Long yesterday, and he said, you know, we're going to go to phase two this year, get in the gun, and get Adrian running out of the gun. Well, you know what? He is a classic I back first. They may get to that, but to get their running game going with Adrian Peterson, they need to put him in the I formation, put J.D. Runnels in front of him, knocking somebody on their rear end, just like they've been doing last year and the year before and the year before. Well, here's what you called for, Coach. I formation, Runnels and Peterson. They fake the ball. And throw it wide open up the field is Travis Wilson. He will have the completion up at about the 40 yard line inside the 40 to about the 37. What you do, you get in your formation, your I formation with two backs and a tight end, which means nine defenders will be in front of the offense. Look at the offense right here. You've got nine defenders in front of your offense because you've only got two wide receivers. It gives you single coverage, two corners on an island right there. An easy throw to Travis Williams for the big completion. If you're going to get that, Drew Coleman makes the tackle. But if you're going to get one-on-one -on -one receivers, this is the formula. As I ran the I formation my time at Auburn, those are the plays you've got to run one-on-one -on -one routes to the wide receivers in I formation. First and 10 in TCU territory. Opening possession of the second half for the Sooners of Oklahoma. Heavy dose of Adrian Peterson, and why not? He had 1,925 yards a year ago and had only a handful in the first half. He carries it now near the, another first down at about the 30-yard line. Again, that's the three wide out, one back eye formation, the zone play to the weak side, but it, get the, it gives deep handoff to, to Adrian Peterson where he can see the holes and see the line of scrimmage from a deep backfield position and do what he does best. You coach from behind many times, unfortunately, Coach. I know right. you guys have come back and won ball games. This opening possession of the second half, critical for Oklahoma. Absolutely. The, the, the tempo that they've shown coming out of, the, out, out of the locker room is everything you would expect out of an Oklahoma team. They'll give it to Peterson again, and he will have the first down at about the 26-yard line as he lumbers ahead for about three and a half. It's almost as if the coaches went back and said, okay, we tried some things that we want to become good at. Now let's go back and what have made us what we are with Adrian Peterson. One back, two back eye formation, run the ball, run the ball, play action to your two wide receivers, your two veteran receivers, uh, Juwan Rankin and, and Travis Williams. Winning his coach in college football. 67 victories in the last six years, and he's trailing by 10 and a half time. As Oklahoma comes out and tries to just grind it out on the ground, that time it is Kiwan Jones the backup tailback giving Peterson a, a bit of a blow. That left side of the line, Joseph, Shashun, and Bush, all veterans who've played a lot of football. Those guys, when you bend that ball back behind the center, those guys have put a lot of reps in. Davin Joseph, maybe the best NFL guy on that team, left tackle. Second and six, Oklahoma opening drive of the second half. They pitch it back to Peterson. He will be inside the 20-yard line. Check that that's Kiwan Jones once again carrying inside the 20. And when they've got to get a play, you'll see right here, they go behind the big man, Davin Joseph. He's a massive 6'4", 312-pound tackle, plays the left tackle, and is going to be the guy you want to run behind uh, when you run that ball up the middle. Thompson in the shotgun. Hands it off and down nearly inside the 10-yard line. A touchdown saving tackle down there by Quincy Butler, the left cornerback. Now that's that's the phase two. That's the shotgun running of Adrian Pierce. And we've got a passing situation. You slide over, you get the draw. Now he's still got the open. The one thing about that formation, it does allow Adrian Peterson to run in space. It allows them to spread the defensive out and get bigger, bigger seams. It all starts with that eye backfield, I guarantee, though, for Adrian Pearson. Peterson. Heisman Trophy runner-up a year ago had only five yards in the first half. Make it up for here early in the second half. Peterson on the edge. Five-yard touchdown, Oklahoma. We said before the game they had Peterson. We didn't know what else. They've still got Peterson. Opening possession of the second half, and Bob Stoops said going in at halftime, we're going to give the ball to Adrian Peterson, and why not? It's exactly what they have done. They just drive it right down the Horn Frog's throat.
game. Norman, Oklahoma, TCU up 10 to 7. He led 10 zip at halftime. And Oklahoma on the strength of Adrian Peterson, six carries, 43 yards to open the second half in a drive. Drove the length of the field and put seven points on the board. Peterson, by the way, had five total yards rushing in the first half because Gary Patterson's defense did a phenomenal job. But he had 43 in the opening drive of the second half. It's a three-point TCU lead here as we have just over five minutes and 40 seconds to play in the third quarter. Five wide receivers for the Horned Frogs. And Walter Bryant, the recipient of the short completion at on about the 35. I tell you, this has become an Adrian Peter Peterson versus Ty Gunn because there's only 48 yards rushing for TCU, and he has got to hit every conceivable type of pass to keep these drives going because they've been unable to get any consistent get ground game, and Oklahoma isn't giving up the deep ball. Ty Gunn, who only had, had only started 12 games in three years because of injury. Blew out a knee in 2002, had a shoulder injury in 03, an ankle last year, trying to stay healthy. A reversal to Rodgers and nothing doing this time. A heavy loss, it'll bring up a fourth down. And meanwhile, what's going on with Clint Ingram? Let's get an injury report update from Trenny Kuznera. Well, guys, as you saw, Clint Ingram took quite a hit and then was escorted off the field. The word I have from the Oklahoma sideline is that he has a stinger and he's been taken to the locker room for further evaluation, guys. Thank you very much, Trenny. That's good news for uh, Clint Ingram, who was one of the senior co-captains for Oklahoma. It's a stinger and nothing more serious than that. Well, Oklahoma, third and long, third and 13, trying to stop him for the second consecutive time, and that pass... Corey Rogers oh. could not hold on, and he's the record-setting wide receiver from a year ago in and out of his hands. He's kicking himself right there. He had a chance to make the catch and get the first down, made the number one mistake, ran with the football before he tucked it in, before he looked it in, and, of course, it's an incompletion. Now you got to punt it away and, and give the momentum possibly back to Oklahoma. And Bob Stoops' defense developing a little bit of confidence here in the second half, having stopped TCU twice in a row, something they could not do much in the very first half. Fourth and 13, and Courtney will punt it away. And Courtney couldn't get it off. And Oklahoma, great effort by Jason Carter, the free safety, knifing in. We told you how important special teams and what a focus special teams were the last couple of weeks for Bob Stoops and company. And now they will take over deep in TCU territory at the 16-yard line. Jason Carter, four years as a backup, not the starter, always backing up, but he makes a living on specialty teams. Wants to find a way to help this team on special teams. And what a huge play that was for Jason Carter. That right there very well make a big turning play uh, as he's able to force the punter to the side and not able to get the punt off. Ryan Courtney, if, if he would have tried to kick the football, he probably would have gotten uh, the Absolutely, off. absolutely. So probably wise just to hold on to the football. Oklahoma trying to take the lead here. Hands it off to Peterson. Big opening inside, closes in a hurry, but Peterson charges ahead down to about the 10-yard line. Jeremy Modkins, the senior free safety, making the stop. Do you remember first quarter, uh, Oklahoma was inside the five yard. Paul Thompson fumbles the ball away. Uh, 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 a score. Now he's back in there. And Peterson gets up a little bit limping, holding that right ankle, and now will go down. Adrian Peterson, who had off season shoulder surgery. He had a shoulder injury last August in camp, re injured against AM, had the shoulder operated on. Hasn't had much direct contact on the shoulder, but this looks like uh, they're looking at the right ankle. Take a look again, see if we can see what happened as Peterson was trying to keep those ankles moving and push the pile. Such a strong runner, he's got unbelievable thighs and strength. Hard to knock down. Hard to see there, a no. couple of TCU defenders are able to grab that leg and ankle. Obvi Obviously, when you're working through the inside of the line and you're getting wrapped up and you can't pump and work for yardage, uh, such an easy chance to twist. 
an ankle or a knee. Different angle again. We'll see if we can watch Peterson's right lower leg and ankle as he gets through. Gets contact there, still trying to push off. Okay. Gets rolled up on just slightly. Peterson very, very strong. The strength and conditioning coach says that Peterson may be the strongest back they've had here in a long time. They put 45 or put 11 45 pound plates on the leg machine in the weight room and he can he can raise it with one leg. That's incredible. I thought they say with what 80 pound weights in each arm and does a 33 inch vertical jump to a box. Carrying 80 pound dumbbells in each right. hand. He leaps to a box 33 inches off the ground. So he is a remarkable physical specimen. Bob Stoops knows what it, it feels like to play Florida State. That's where uh, he had maybe one of his shining moments back in 2000 in the Orange Bowl. I think he knows what it's like to see that young man. He had to help off the field. That's what he doesn't want to ever see. Take a look at Adrian Peterson. Watch the right ankle there. Gets it on the ground. Pushing off. Just a great effort, you know, great effort individual. He got up out, off of the ground and tried to walk back to the huddle and then couldn't put a lot of weight on that right lower ankle. <laughs> Courageous young man, 1,925 yards a year ago. All-time NCAA freshman rushing record. Broke the r rushing record held here by Billy Sims, the Heisman Trophy winner back in 1978. And the first and only freshman ever to be voted a runner-up in the Heisman Trophy race. We'll get you updates as soon as we can from the sidelines. Second and four. Kewan Jones, the backup tailback, is in motion. Thompson will take it and give it to Jones, who will knife his way down to about the five. That should be enough for another Oklahoma first down. Tackled by number four, Quincy Butler. Kewan Jones, a senior, has rushed for over 2,000 yards, only nine starts. And last year when Adrian Peterson was named number one, it was Kewan Jones that had to back him up and now an opportunity for him to see if he can help get Oklahoma back into the lead. And ironically, Coach, Kewan yes. Jones missed most of August camp here with a sprained foot. He comes in now with the uh, foot injury and ankle injury to Adrian Peterson. First and goal for the Sooners. Jones again will get it and get maybe a yard. I tell you, it's obvious with a, with a rookie quarterback like this who hasn't played a lot, uh, not a lot of things to put the pressure on him. Trying to run the ball, get the score. I don't think they'll sit for the field goal to tie it up here, but they've got to do something because you would love to run a naked boot right now. Fake the ball to the tailback and get your quarterback who can run rolling out, out the backside. And just a reminder, time permitting, we'll have Thrifty Car Rentals post-game report. John Craig and Aaron featuring scores and highlights from across the country, updating on what's happening in college football and what could happen later on in the afternoon and tonight and tomorrow. Second and goal for the Sooners. Jones will be stuffed as they try to pull the football out. He holds on, but no gain whatsoever. And that'll bring up third and goal from outside the four-yard line. Absolutely no one paid any attention to the naked boot by the quarterback. There's going to be unblocked people if they're going to give the ball inside. Uh, and now that it's third down, the defense would more likely think there would be a passing situation or a, a, a naked boot or a rollout by the quarterback. The last two years, they told us they have one quarterback run that they have called because Jason White had the knee surgeries on both knees. They've got a running quarterback now in Paul Thompson. Let's see what they do. Thompson rolls on the near side, has a receiver, and overthrows Travis that means we'll probably see Garrett Hartley come strolling in to attempt a field goal to tie it up here in Norman. Paul kind of rushed that one a little bit. He had a little bit more time as he was rolling out. He had more time. He could throw it away at any time, but give the play time to develop. Uh, it's worth a touchdown as opposed to a field goal. Got a little bit nervous and got rid of it quickly. Hartley missed a 49-yarder earlier in the first half. He had plenty of leg, just missed it wide right. This is a 21-yard attempt is up and good. And just that quickly, we are all tied up here. You can. You saw Adrian Peterson back in the ball game a moment ago, and 
unable to get on track with a couple of yards. Doss with the penalty on the play will move the ball forward. It'll be a first and five. There's a look at Peterson's numbers. His worst rushing effort a year ago was against Nebraska when he had 58 yards as well. Here's Bomar getting pressure, and he will go down, drops the football, and it is picked up by TCU. And TCU will take over at the Oklahoma 16-yard line as Bomar fumbles and David Hawthorne, the sophomore linebacker out of Corsicana, Texas, picks up the football. Mistake by Brett Bomar. Brett Bomar, when you get those kind of pressure, wrap the ball up here. Now you see the, the blitz is coming full speed, putting pressure on. Wrap that ball up. Yeah, Jamison Newby is all over the quarterback. He forces the fumble. And then Hawthorne picks it up for the Horn Frogs. You know, the play before, Mortim uh, the, the safety made the tackle on uh, Jeremy Modkins, made the tackle on Peterson in the backfield. That time, three blitzes. This is going to be a pressure, pressure, pressure day on those young quarterbacks. Pressure to run into the quarterbacks for Oklahoma's offense. That turnover means the first time TCU is in Oklahoma territory in the second half. Throwing it back, almost got it picked off. And I tell you, if Jan Yadigitsha can grab that football is nothing between him and pay dirt some 80 yards away Ty Gunn, i'm telling you that's one of those that you can't afford to make your senior you've got a hit screen out there but it's covered all you got to do is continue your arm motion and throw it over the receiver and the defender you can't pull off of it just extend and throw over the play out of bounds and the real test now for that oklahoma defense coming up trying to stop tcu and remember time permitting thrifty car rental post game report john craig and aaron featuring scores and highlights of college football around the country. Second and 10 for the Horned Frogs. Gun on the option to Hobbs. Cuts it back, 10, 5, 4. Check it, that's Robert Merrill, the other 1,000-yard rusher as he's down inside the five-yard line. Zach Latimer, inside linebacker, middle linebacker, made the tackle, but with only 30 yards rushing, what a great time for a 10-yard gain uh, on the, uh, by the tailback. Merrill, and the thing about it is the 10 tackles for, for Latimer. He's having a great day, but what a time for the tailback again to make the big play. Robert Merrill, who led TCU in rushing the past two years as a freshman in 2003. He broke the freshman rushing record that was set by Hobbs a year earlier, 1,107 yards, as we have an Oklahoma Sooner player down on the field. Again, you're seeing the option with all the passing, the option now putting pressure on the safeties. Good blocking of Robert Merrill. You'll see cut back for the first down. And then Zach Latimer again, his 10th tackle of the day. But what a critical point for this uh, ineffective running game for TCU to come alive. Uh, the option again. Yeah, that is John Williams, by the way, the injured Sooner, the 6'5", 250-pound sophomore out of Houston who's had just a phenomenal game here this afternoon, putting all kinds of pressure on the quarterback and backs from his defensive end position. He backs up Calvin Tubido, Tubido, but I'm telling you, they have all played. They have rotated those linemen. John Williams has had an excellent, excellent game. Fumble recovery, four tackles, and it's an unbelievable day, and you just got to hope he's going to be all right. Second injury for a Sooner. Of course, Adrian Peterson going down in the previous two series ago with an ankle, which they have taped up. He has been back on the field. And some rounds bunch giving the volunteers all they can handle in Knoxville at Leland Stadium. First and goal, big opening for Merrill, and he is just shy of the goal line. And will spot the ball at about the yard and a half line. Lewis Baker comes in and showed why he used to be a linebacker, comes in attacking aggressively to make that hit, but now on the two-yard line for TCU. Well, TCU unable to get much in the way of offense in the third quarter, gets the big turnover, the fumble by Bomar, and they are now trying to grind it out on the ground. High gun, 0 for 6 on his last passes. It's that guy right there, Robert Merrill. Second and goal from the two-yard line. Option. Gun gets it to Merrill. Wide open. Touchdown, Horn Frog. A year ago, Robert Merrill in the final regular season game and a fourth and goal on the one yard line. If he gets in, they go to a bowl game. Tulane stopped him and drove 99 yards to upset TCU and keep him out of a bowl. 
Merrill says, I've been waiting a long time to make a difference, and that was a great run from two yards out by the tailback. The extra point is up and good, and TCU breaks back on top. This quarter, new quarterback Paul Thompson, redshirt junior fumbles, causing a, keeping them from getting a touchdown inside the five to start the game. That pass incomplete. David Roach there on the coverage for TCU. TCU a rebuilt secondary. They were 117th in the nation a year ago. You can't get any worse now. There's only 117 teams. What a job. Gary Patterson, Dick Bumpus, and company have done to rebuild a TCU offense that was very porous in 2004. And you talk about rebuilding. It was Oklahoma. Do we rebuild or reload? Well, offensively, there's a little bit of rebuilding going on. Cody Freebie on that floating putt down to Corey Rogers. He lets it bounce. It'll take an Oklahoma bounce, and TCU will take over inside their own 15-yard line. A 48-yard putt without a return. If you're wondering about Adrian Peterson, Peterson injured an ankle early in the fourth quarter, had come out of the football game, has had it taken and come back in, but he has not been the same. Peterson held at just 55 yards rushing. His worst performance a year ago was 58 yards against Nebraska. TCU has not been able to run the ball either. There's Peterson right there checking that ankle. He had to come out for a while uh, to get his ankle retaped. He's back in the game. But it's the running game of TCU. They're winning this game, but have only rushed for 47 yards. Ty Gunn on the reach handoff, and we'll get the ball up over the 10-yard line. That is Delonte Hobbs, their 1,000-yard rusher from two years ago. In, in a possible upset like this, turnovers are so important. TCU, one turnover, but it occurred with 14 seconds left in the half. Did not lead to any score, but both new quarterbacks for Oklahoma have turned the ball over and fumbled, one losing a score inside the five going in, and the other causing the other team to get a score. Last time Oklahoma lost a home opener, September 7th, 1996, to guess who? TCU came here and beat them 20 to 7. It is 17 and the clock is ticking with TCU on offense. Wide open receiver, can he hang on? No, incomplete pass. That would have been very near the first down sticks for tight end Chad Andrus. Chad, again, again, Chad, one of those he usually makes. Did not catch it on the on the first catch. He let it rebound, and when you rebound it against an aggressive defense like Oklahoma, you're not going to have a second chance. Third and seven. TCU has struggled mightily in the second half on offense. It couldn't move it all at all in the third quarter. The turnover a moment ago is what gave them the points. They are 5 of 15 on third downs. A ball typical on a scrimmage and incomplete. And the Horn Frogs will have to put it away in their own end zone. Ty Gunn just cannot find the answer. Nobody's that much open. He just does not have the time, and when he does, he rushes because of the pressure of the previous time. They have got him shook a little bit. He needs to stand in there and find the open receiver. In the third quarter, TCU punter Brian Courtney could not get the punt away. The rush was too significant. They tackled him deep in his own territory. That gave TCU, which, or Oklahoma, a chance to go in and kick the tying field goal. I'll see if he can get it away here in his own end zone. Low line drive floater, hits it about midfield, and will roll inside the 45. May have been touched by a TCU player up near midfield, and they will mark it, yes, up at about the 48-yard line. A 44-yard punt. In Norman, Oklahoma, at Oklahoma Memorial Stadium, over 84,000 on hand. The opener for the Big 12 reigning champion, the Sooners of Oklahoma, ranked seventh in the AP poll. And the newest addition of the Mountain West Conference, the Horned Frogs of TCU have come calling. And, boy, what a difference the half makes. Take a look at the offensive production here. TCU, the majority of those points coming in the first half. They had 225 of those in the first half in Oklahoma. They struggled in the first half, and they have gotten most of their yards in the second half. High formation, toss back the tailback and that is Peterson and he will die forward for about four and a half to five yards. Bob Stoops the winningest coach winningest active coach in college football 67 victories 
in his seventh year. He has never lost in the month of September, 19-0, in his six previous history, six previous years here at Oklahoma. Strategy has not changed for TCU. They're going to overload the box continually. Uh, for Adrian Peterson, he has one good series, one drive, which led to a touchdown opening drive, second half. After that, he hasn't been able to do much from the running back position. Second and four, Thompson back to pass, gets it picked off at the 25. And that is Drew Coleman, the very athletic quarterback, and Thompson just threw it right to him. Now, I'm going to tell you something, though. Travis Day, Travis Williams, the, Wilson, the receiver, did, broke his route and made a big problem. Paul Thompson's going to get chewed out for this. Watch number four coming in from the outside. You'll see Thompson come across. But Travis Wilson breaks off his route and breaks out over the top. We'll see it again. Watch outside now as he's running the vertical, takes the outside. Now comes back instead of coming underneath, breaks back to the outside. The quarterback saw the post cut inside through the post cut. That's as much a veteran Travis Wilson's fault as it is the, the new starter, Paul Thompson, at quarterback. Third turnover of the afternoon for the Sooners of Oklahoma. Two fumbles and now an interception. And TCU back on offense will try to grind out some clock. As this time Merrill will still fighting his way forward. Strong-legged tailback that's up near the 45-yard line. Gains about eight. Last three times Oklahoma's had the football here in the fourth quarter. Well, fumble, punt, interception. That won't get it done when you're trying to win the opener here at home. Yeah, because TCU really doesn't have to take a lot of chances. Offensively, they're up by seven, but they can run the ball for short gains, and they can throw five-yard passes, pick up a first down or second down. I don't think they feel that, that Oklahoma can drive the ball the length of the field. Five wide receivers, and he gets a receiver up. It should be enough for the first down depending upon the spot, and now they're going to spot it right at the 48-and-a-half-yard line. It'll be very close to a TCU first down. Mike Schultz, the offensive coordinator for TCU, said we've got to do three things to win this game. We've got to control the clock. They had the ball two, to, two times to one for Oklahoma in the first half. We can't turn the ball over. They've only had one before the half, didn't lead any points, and he said we got to get it into the fourth quarter so the momentum will go to us, and that's exactly what they've done for TCU. That is the first completion, by the way, for Ty Gunn on his last nine passes. Gary Patterson knows how hard they have worked in the heat of the summer. He had his kids running in the middle of the day, so we're going to be conditioned to play in the fourth quarter. Merrill, a nice cutback inside the 50-yard line. He danced right and left and averted two, avoided two defenders to gain about four yards. Clint, Clint Ingram back in as linebacker to make the tackle. Good to see him back in the game. He's been all over the field uh, in the game today. Health insurance is on everybody's mind, right? The TCU bits. Let's check in with Trent. Well, guys, TCU is definitely excited, but strong safety Brian Bonner is walking up and down the sidelines, telling the guys to stay focused. That this thing is not over yet. They may be winning the battles, but they haven't won the entire thing yet. They need to stay focused on the task at hand, guys. Coming off a five and six season, TCU trying to rebound, and that pass complete for another Horn Frog first down. They had gone to six consecutive bowl games until last year when they finished five and six. They had had seven consecutive non-losing seasons. In 2003, they rose to as high as sixth in the BCS rankings prior to that late season upset in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And today, the Horned Frogs of TCU, Gary Patterson's bunch from Fort Worth, they have never trailed here. An Oklahoma Sooner team that's coming off back-to-back -back appearances in the BCS title game. I keep going to those early deep balls thrown by Oklahoma that did not connect. They had two wide open deep balls, did not connect. Could have given them some cushion. An old, more experienced Jason White would have, would have completed those passes, but that's what you lack with a rookie quarterback, and now TCU is playing a very conservative game of run the clock, run the clock, don't turn the ball over. Take a look at the numbers there for the fifth-year senior quarterback, Ty Gunn, 22 of 43, 220 yards and a touchdown. A year ago, he threw for 368 yards when TCU beat Northwestern out of the Big Ten in double overtime in their opener. Most importantly, no interceptions in a game like this. You're going to upset somebody, turnovers are the key. Second and eight, TCU trying to get down on the ground. They throw it this time inside, bounces off a of helmet and gets it picked off. Interception by Clint Ingram, who left the game earlier, and that 
Ingram, who left the game with a stinger earlier, picks off the pass, and Coach, you just jinxed it. I just jinxed him. It wasn't a bad throw. It was a deflection, and it bounced so high up in the air, somebody had to get it, but you know it was going to be Clint Ingram. He's been everywhere. He's been all over the play. Watch him right now. Fairly safe throw. Just throw the slant. Hit him right in the helmet. Here comes Clint right there, always around the ball. A 23-yard return by Ingram. You can't do more than he hit, he hit helmet Harmon right in the ear hole. Right in the helmet. That's why it bounced so high. Get your hands up. That thud you heard, Harmon, was the football coming at you. Uh, you know, and, and it's so sad because you talk about a team and an effort and play calling and everything. You're doing everything right. Receiver doesn't turn around, and the ball hits the helmet right up into the air. Oklahoma will take over in TCU territory. Pitch back to the tailback. Peterson cuts it back inside the 45. Folks, those are hard yards, and that had every yard he's got today has been a hard yard. They put so many people in there. It's a 4-2-5 defense. You're saying five defensive backs. How do you stop it? Well, in a 4-2-5, two of the safeties walk up and become linebackers. It's a 4-4, eight-man front. And, and sometimes the other safety walks up for nine. So it's a pure overload. They don't beat the offense with superior athletes. They beat with superior numbers. Unblocked defenders has been the key. The numbers for Adrian Peterson. And he will get it again. And this time, great effort by Jones coming in from outside to make the tackle. Gary Patterson trying to get a stop from his fired up Horn Frog defense. Third and eight. Inside of five minutes to play in Norman, Oklahoma. TCU trying to hold on to what would be a major upset in college football. Pass almost picked off again. Quincy Butler, the defender there for TCU. We're seeing a pattern here of what's going to happen to Oklahoma, not just today, but the rest of the season. They're going to find ways to take away the running backs and give the quarterback the responsibility of hitting one-on-one -on -one receivers, and they don't quite hit them well enough. Well, fourth and eight, and Oklahoma's going to go for it. Got to do it now. Got to do it. There's, there's Defense can come back on and get you the ball back, but the opportunities are running out right now with 420 left in the game. Paul Thompson, one of his last seven, he's thrown the football. Motion, three wide receivers. Here's Thompson. Has a receiver, and he doesn't hold on. Right in the hands of Lindy Holmes, the freshman from Dallas, Texas. He would have the first down. And they will turn the ball over with four minutes and 13 seconds to play to TCU with pretty darn good field position. Folks, what's the difference here? You got a, star, a rookie quarterback throwing to a rookie receiver. You lose Jason White at quarterback, you got a rookie receiver or a fifth year junior who hasn't played before, throwing to a redshirt freshman who didn't play. You lose four top receivers, you lose Jason White, the same plays don't quite get executed the same. And folks, that's rebuilding, that's not reloading. That's that's the reality. TCU trying to run on the field. Got to snap the ball, play clock is two seconds away and they're gonna use a timeout. Or else they would lose five yards. Well, they've used the clock perfectly so far. 32 minutes for TCU, only 23 minutes of possession for Oklahoma. They've had the ball on offense almost 10 minutes longer than Oklahoma. We well, told you that TCU was horrible in pass defense a year ago. 117th in the country, giving up 304 yards and 29 touchdowns through the air. Even though they were pretty good on offense, they couldn't stop people. That's right. why they only won five football games. And, you know, they had injuries. They had two new cornerbacks. Uh, that guy right there, there you go, Coach Patterson, Gary Patterson. He's, he's been a, his forte has been defense. They've been top five in the nation three times since he's been there. They've been number one in scoring defense twice uh, since he's been there. Two years ago, they were number one in scoring de defense. I think he was shocked more than anybody when the injuries came up. Two first-time starters at corner from junior college. They couldn't execute. And here's a guy who prides himself in defense. I think today has been so, it's, has been so far such a rewarding experience for Gary Patterson and the great job he and those guys have done. Gary Patterson was a strong safety at Kansas State. He played linebacker in strong safety. 
He learned the passion for defense under his current defensive coordinator, Dick Bumpus, when he was at Utah State and later on at Navy. Then he worked for, under Dennis Francioni when he came to New Mexico to TCU. He spent three years as a coordinator for the Horned Frogs of TCU and well-deservedly was given the head coaching job when Francione moved on to Alabama. Horned Frogs trying to run out the clock here, and Hobbs, that won't get it done. He has nailed the line of scrimmage for no gain. You'd like to try to get another first down here again. This is Oklahoma. This is Norman. You got four minutes left in the game. I know you're not going to do anything risky. You threw a safe slant last series. You hit the guy right in the head. He bounced off his helmet for an for a inter interception, so it got you a little shell-shocked in play calling. Oklahoma has one timeout remaining. They need to get the football back and not allow TCU to churn out some clock. I keep thinking about that block punt earlier, and they've, they've played return punt ever since. Again, you know they're going to run the football, and Merrill gets hit in the backfield. Robert Merrill hit by Zach Latimer about a yard deep and spins off the tackle to get back to the line of scrimmage. And when they blocked that punt earlier, it was they got there so early, the punter didn't even try to block punt it. He just stepped aside because it was over. But I've noticed that they've had the return punt on ever since. They haven't tried to block it yet. I'm seeing as I go forward now, you've got to think if we get down to fourth down, there's going to be a heavy, heavy uh, block attempt because I can't see this Oklahoma offense sustaining a steady drive down the field. TCU just 5 of 16 on third downs today. They were less than 39% a year ago on third down. There's the completion. It won't be enough, though, up to midfield for Corey Rogers. It'll still be about four yards shy of the first down. We all know we shouldn't use cotton swabs to clean or dry. Patterson, we mentioned his fifth year at the helm of TCU. They have had three of the school's seven all-time 10-plus win seasons, three conference titles. He was a 2002 Conference USA Coach of the Year. As you look at Brian Courtney, the punter. And coach, you were in this uh, situation a number of times over the years coaching. What do you, do you talk to your punter or just leave him alone? No, 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 you don't say too much. Just remind them of getting, you know, mind them, get the ball off, take the proper steps. You remind your players, stay in a little longer, stay in protection a little bit longer, and then make sure you get downfield for cover. Just making sure everybody calmly does their assignment. As a head coach, you're out there, really, you're on your knees shaking like crazy because this is about, about to be the biggest game of your career, and you're sitting down there saying, okay, nothing's going to go wrong, nothing's going to go wrong, and you're sitting there looking at the clock, knowing that football is football, something can go wrong. Ryan Courtney, who missed much of fall camp with a groin injury, transfer from UNLV via Mesa Community College. Low snap, and he gets the low line drive end over end floater that'll hit at the 10 yard line and they can't keep it out of the end zone and Oklahoma will take over on their own 20 a 51 yard punt if you count the roll and Oklahoma will take over with just over two minutes to play in this one trailing by seven well the folks here in Norman Oklahoma are holding their breath, 84,000 of which 2,500 purple and white clad fans have made their way up from Fort Worth, but the vast majority are dressed in crimson and cream. As the Horn Frogs of TCU taking on the seventh ranked Sooners of Oklahoma who have played in black back-to-back -back BCS title games with the reigning Big 12 champion. And they gotta get something done here in the final two minutes and they're gonna go down the defeat here in the home opener for the first time since 1996. Prior to the snap, false start, number 85 on the offense, five yards from the previous spot, still first down. Looking at Bob Stoops, he is 36 and one here at Memorial Stadium. His only loss coming to our rival Oklahoma State back in 2001. He has never lost a game as the Sooners head coach in the month of September. They have managed to find a way to pull him out. They dump it off this time to Jones, and he will scamper out of bounds up near the 20-yard line. To Jones. Eric Buchanan covering on that play. Again, the object here as a defense, the object in here. You know how people say they hate to see prevent defense, folks? I'm playing prevent defense right now. 
It's a three. It's a three, a three five three. It's a four four three. It's get as much pressure as you can, but make them catch the ball underneath your umbrella of coverage. Catch it underneath the umbrella of coverage. Shotgun formation for Thompson. Lone setback is Jones. Three receivers in the pattern, and he goes for the uh, tight end. That's big Joe John Finley, who was the best receiver among the tight ends. Only two veteran wideouts for this Oklahoma team. Everybody else has very little playing experience. Talent, but little playing experience. Third and five, and the clock is ticking away. He gets the pass completed. It'll be very, very close to the first down. There's going to be a flag for coming off late on the field. They did not participate, but the lineman got off the field late. Drew George will talk it over. He's the Big 12 referee with the linesman and the side judge. From the ball placement, looks like they were going to be just shy of the first down. infraction on the defense. Never got off the field. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. The yardage results in a first down. Yeah, he almost got off. You could see him running out there. He could not participate, but the rule says if you can't get off, even if you're trying to, we've got to throw the flag. Five-yard penalty will give Oklahoma a first down here with a minute and 26 to play, still deep in their own territory. Thompson and overthrows the receiver. Again, the big tight end, six-foot-six-inch Joe John Finley. Is you able to get just enough pressure with four, four rushers? Now, they're trying to get some uh, some defensive linemen in there. We talked to, with Gary Patterson about substituting linemen, getting a lot of people playing. Here we are, the fourth quarter, the 120 left in the game, getting fresh people in. Is how vital that is that he substituted early, is able to have some fresh rushers in the game so he can play zone and play protection. You see his two safeties playing deep, which is what you've got to do. There's Thompson back to pass, looks upfield, has a receiver downfield, and... Great defensive effort as a retended to get the pass to Travis Wilson. Drew Coleman, who pick, had the pick in the fourth quarter, had the interception early in the fourth quarter. Drew is the senior out of Henderson, Texas. Now, folks, I'm not believing that. I'm not believing that the safeties came up, played man coverage, they blitzed. If that's a perfectly thrown pass, folks, this is a touchdown. This is a touchdown and game winner. All you people that hate to see prevent defense, that want to see people blitz in the end of a game just to get after them, they blitz. The guy was wide open. Thank goodness they missed it if you're a TCU fan. That's the fourth underthrown pass where you had a receiver that could have gotten it downfield today for Oklahoma. This one will go to Wilson, and he will be shoved out of bounds, which will stop the clock after the gain of about two yards. Yeah, you know, you people think, well, you know, Jason White, I mean, how valuable was he? He wasn't a great, he retired in the NFL, maybe not a great NFL pick, but what a great, great college quarterback Jason White was. He didn't miss passes like that. These young men may one day be that way, but they're not quite yet there. You could see it today. These guys have a ways to go. And the turnovers have really hurt Oklahoma. Yes. Three turnovers today, two fumbles. The one by Bomar, unfortunately, who's had a great beginning here as a redshirt freshman quarterback, hurt him. The interception hurt him. And then, of course, Paul Thompson. And another fumble. And Oklahoma looks like they may have fallen back on the football. Fourth down. It's, it's, it's TCU ball either way with, no, with one timeout left. And that should pretty much do it here as the TCU band begins to play. Look again here at Thompson trying to hold on to the football. Just a case of a one-on-one -on -one defensive line beating a one-on-one -on -one offensive lineman right there to make the sack. No secrets, no tricks. Beating a run man one-on-one -on -one to make the sack. Gary Patterson, one of the great wins in TCU history, about to come down right now with a minute and three left. Gary Patterson's teams won 10 games in 2002, including a big win in the Liberty Bowl. In 2003, they were 11 and two, and he was a finalist for the Bobby Dodd National Coach of the Year Award, which by the way, was won by the guy across the field, you know, from him, Bob Stoops. Yeah, and, and Oklahoma, Bob Stoops, I'm not sure in a regular season he's ever been in this situation before. All the fears other fans had that he would admit maybe they're rebuild, Where's the swagger? We've got a ways to go. 
And today, Chevrolet players of the game, well, take a look. Ty Gunn, what a job. The fifth-year senior quarterback, those are his numbers. Zach Latimer for Oklahoma, his first start at middle linebacker, 15 tackles today. Latimer playing from sideline to sideline. And in recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Forty-five-year-old Gary Patterson, his fifth year at the helm of the Horned Frogs of TCU, coming off a disappointing five and six season, a defensive coordinator and an accomplished head coach.